um, I saw um, you, you know a, guy, a team that played hard, offense that played hard, competed hard from start to finish. Uh, that that uh, just made too many state too many mistakes to, to be able to win the game and do the job that we're supposed to do. Score more points than the other team came up short of that just through execution, through not taking advantage of opportunities. Um, and conversion downs, that was the big thing that stuck out, you know, to me was the third and fourth combined. We had been we had been fairly decent uh, up until that, this point in the season, and, and Saturday was we really, um, really did not perform very well when it came to third and fourth down conversions. Barry, I know it's been talked about before you've addressed it, focused on it, but those short yardage situations, what what is going wrong there? What do you guys need to clean up? Well, obviously, the, the start off the, the, the first series of the game, we got down inside of there, and um, you know, we had, I think, four, there was four play calls, right, on first and goal, and, I mean, two of the four, we, we just didn't execute. Um, and, uh, you know, the third, you know, the other two calls, you could be made for argue that they had a better defense than, than maybe what I had called, but we had opportunities to get in to take advantage of it through execution. Um, and, and then, you know, the other situations, we had, a, I think, a fourth and one or fourth and two, or both of those that we came up short on. And... Uh, you know, sometimes it's sometimes it's a combination between you know you say, man, I wish I could have had this call over with over. You know, obviously you vet all those things during the course of the week. You plan and go through them and say, here's what you anticipate. That they don't always unfold exactly the way that you think that they're going to unfold, as far as just what you're going to see from a front standpoint or a coverage. But those those play calls have you know, which you say, I don't know if answers, but opportunities for us to be able to be successful despite what they what they uh, play. And um, so there's a balance there between. You know, like man, that's one that um, I'd like to call that one over again. Or you know, we got to we got to execute better. Regardless, whatever it is, like we tell the players all the time, I and mean, whether it's execution or it's play call, I mean, the bottom line is we're, we we are not getting it done. Didn't get it done on Saturday, and that falls squarely on me. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we got to be better in those situations. You guys have talked all the year about staying in, in the in the moments. How do you keep from letting that game that you just had? Be a problem for the next week, the week after. Yeah, so that's a good question. I think you know it's the kind of the proverbial, you can't let somebody beat you twice. Right. You know, I uh, mean, Michigan State uh, came in here and and uh, earned the victory on Saturday, and we can't let that affect our preparation for uh, a really good Purdue team uh, it, that's got a game that's uh, so important to us. So I think Coach did a great job yesterday laying that out to the guys to say, hey, listen, we're we came in, we watched the film, um, we we uh, I don't think anybody enjoyed watching the film. I know, I know they didn't. None of us enjoyed watching it. I mean, we got in there and got after them. We didn't change who we are. I mean, we, we're going to coach and teach the same way we would if we just won the game six in a row, you know. But uh, you bury the game, and then, and then we literally had a break, and then we came back and said, all right, now we're turning the page to Purdue, and our guys were very responsive to that. Was there anything you saw in particular on the offensive line that seemed like that was kind of an outlier of what we've seen out of them in the previous six games? Yeah, I would agree with that to, to, some, to some extent. I thought that... Uh, you know their effort and their, their their strain. I don't think that's ever been compromised. I mean, they, they play hard. That's our standard. You know, uh, at all positions. And um, but you know, f for whatever reason, uh, some of it was we moved a little bit more. Um, you know, with some motions and some some eye candy, we moved a little bit more in some of our run schemes, and it caused us some more problems than maybe than I anticipated it causing us. Um, but but we have to we need to play better across all positions. But in particular, it wasn't one of their better days, um, and uh, they have been a group that has been really consistent for us and have really led us. And uh, I th I, there's no doubt in my mind we'll bounce back from that. Um, and listen, I'm not saying that this this reason we came up short was on, on these guys. It was listen, it was all of us. They were, all had our moments where we didn't perform very well. Um, obviously, when you score 15 points in a game, it's not good enough to win hardly any games. And um, so we have to all play better, but our, our line, um, you know, will we'll bounce back, I think, this week. Is it fair to suggest that if you guys don't play well up front, you can't play call your way out of that in the same way that if the offensive line plays great, every play caller is great? Well, I mean, I, I think that's probably, you know, hyperbole on both ends, to be honest with you. I mean, it, it, I, don't, I don't necessarily agree with um, that wholeheartedly, but there's some truth to that. Uh, you know, obviously, the better they play, the, the, the more we control the line of scrimmage, the more um, the more you are able to, to stay within your plan. And um, and the, and when you're struggling a little bit, it makes it more difficult. But it's no different than anybody else doing their job. Same for the quarterback or for the receivers. I mean, you had to do your job. And um, 
we've had a lot of moments where guys have done that, but Saturday at inopportune times, so I'm not talking about any one position group. We just collectively didn't didn't do our job well enough, starting with me moving on moving on down. What stands out to you about the Purdue defense? Tough, physical. I mean, they look like a lot of the you know the other Big Ten defenses. Uh, they're they know what they're doing. They're very sound in their scheme. Uh, Support the run really well. You know they, they've statistically been really, really good against the run this year. I think they're top 25 nationally against run and rushing defense. Uh, so they tackle well and they get down in there in the box and challenge you to throw it. And uh, I think they do a good job on defense. A lot of common opponents at this time of year. Yeah. Do you do you look at those games and see what teams had success and how they did it? And then... Certainly, yeah. There's a lot of film. I mean, we're nine games into it, and there's a lot of film and validation of who they are and what they are. It goes both ways too. You know, we've got a lot of film out there too of ourselves. So. It's all available, and this time of year, everybody's pretty settled in to kind of who they are and what they're trying to be, and so there's not a lot of uh, punches pulled at this particular time of the year. It's about executing who you are, and can you be who you are better than they are who they are? That's a lot of R's. <laughs> names, but you guys get what I'm saying. Barry, obviously, um, Chase gets so much attention, gets other people some opportunities. The tight ends seem to be <coughs> benefactors of that here recently. Like, is, is that something that's opening up a little bit more, or has that been more of a focus? Yeah, it, ha it has been. I mean, it, against uh, Nebraska, it kind of popped up. I use this word a lot organically through the course of the play call. Last week was a little bit more intentional to some degree, um, kind of depending on the forecast of the weather. You know, I felt like that that was something that, you know, we were going to be probably limited and in, in, um, be able to push the ball down the field uh, and you know, it kind of held true to some degree. I mean, that was the most. That was the most intense win I've been a part of in a football game. I mean, it was it was pretty violent. And so we thought that maybe using the run action and play action would help be able to put the ball in the little bit intermediate zone uh, for our tight ends in particular, and that and that helped to be true. They did a nice job in the passing game on Saturday. How do you, how do you balance that? You know, Chase Brown is so good at what he does. He draws a lot of attention, but you don't want to go away from him. Yeah. So like, using him as a decoy and then using him. How do you balance that? Yeah, that, that, that's a great question, and, and uh, you know that's something that I'm as a play caller and, and organizer of the offense constantly, uh, not wrestling with, but trying to, you know, navigate and piece together how how best uh, that would fit us and what we need to do. And uh, because you're right, I mean, you 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 got a guy here that's uh, a really elite running back, and you want him to touch the ball. You don't want to him. You want him to impact the game, but you also don't want to do it so much and so often that it's you're beating your head up against the wall. So, um, you know, there's been times we've had nice balance in that. There's probably been times where we've stuck to that to, to, to some degree too much. But um, hopefully down the stretch we can really find that formula that, and we've had, we've found that formula a lot of times during the course of the year of the run and play action and using our quick passing game. <coughs> so hopefully we get back on track this week with using those things. No, I, Isaiah has kind of had those long catch and runs last week. So have you guys been able to maybe kind of find him more space on those short routes? It's just happened through the course of the play call. I mean, it's, it's, again, it's uh, been our base, some of our base play calls on early downs. And, and he's done, it was almost like a carbon copy of the week before against Nebraska when he caught that ball. And there's Chase down the field and, uh, blocking multiple guys and Isaiah running cat after catch. So, you know, he's, I think Isaiah's really the last couple of weeks has played really well for us and, and has proven over and over again that he's a real a threat when he has a ball in his hands. We've got to continue to find ways for him to, to touch the football. But, Really, all the things that are showing up for us have happened pretty naturally uh, for us in the flow of the in the flow of the offense. And we'll ask Brad about Josh's availability, but just for the last two weeks, what has it been like trying to find the right amount of usage for him, getting him back into the rhythm? Yeah, I think it's. I mean, obviously there was a little bit more uh, Saturday, and uh, then he got he got horse collared, and I think that affected him just a little bit uh, uh, physically, honestly, and. Um, so it probably would have probably would have been supplemented more down the stretch of the game if maybe maybe if that hadn't happened. Uh, and so I think the biggest thing for us is I saw a big jump from him last week and for his his readiness. You know, the week before in Nebraska, he was probably on the verge of being ready. He was close, and then last week he was really close to being I think back to 100 percent. And I think as once he gets established there, we, obviously we're never going to put him in the game if he's not prepared and physically able to protect himself. But I think mentally last week was a really good, really good week for him to get back to gain that confidence. 
Um, and and I, I think that moving forward here, I think he's going to have a full slate of health and be able to really impact the game more and more as he goes on each week. What does that readiness look like? like how, do you, how can you tell that he's starting to get to that point? Yeah, I think you just watch him in practice and run in pregame, and there's no favoring uh, and his eyes and his, his, his countenance and all those types of things that go along with the guy being fully engaged and ready to go. I think he's made some real strides in that. Uh, what have you learned from Coach B about uh, building a program? Well, yeah, that's. Uh, I think Coach has got an incredible gift for that. Um, no, no, I don't think. I know he does. And so I, I saw that, and I was able to um, experience that as working for him for five years at Arkansas. I saw, I saw the way he went about, um, you know, the culture. And, and, and he doesn't use that word, you know. Uh, that's a lot of people that uses that word. Uh, the, a lot of people use that word in, in sports and business. Is a lot of, in particular, football and basketball. You talk about the culture that you build. And uh, he has a unique way of building it without, you know, banging the drum saying we're built. This is our culture. Like these are our expectations. This is how we operate on a daily basis. And and he has a unique ability to get coaches and players to conform to that uh, through the course of without ruling with an iron fist. And um, and I think that's a what makes him really unique in this business. He's got a lot of experience, a lot of success, a lot of wisdom, and. Um, he just continually through consistency is what I would say, is he's the same guy every day. Um, so I've learned a lot of those things about how to manage that from him, and it's, uh, it's something I'm continually learning from on a daily basis. Even like when you, you know, how you handle success, you success uh, win in six games in a row, and then how you handle failure, uh, because that's part of this business, and that's part of this job, and I think he does a great job of that. Brent, Brent said something after the game about personnel groupings in the red zone and mm -hmm. you get closer inside the 10. My question is, as a play caller, how much are you thinking about, God, I don't want to substitute here because I don't want to give them a chance to? Uh, I don't get too caught up in that. I think okay. there's times, I mean, when you get them in certain groupings, like you want to continue to play. Um, it, I mean, it's just like when we went to uh, 13 personnel the other day um, and on the goal line. As soon as we did that, we knew they were going to sub and get heavy, and we had a very specific scheme for a very specific defense that unveiled just like we thought it would. We just didn't. Uh, you know, we weren't able to execute the play the way that uh, we were hoping to, to be able to do. But so there's a lot of strategy that goes involved in that's involved in that to say, okay, we're going to stay in what we're currently in to keep them from subbing, or are we going to go <coughs> to a grouping that's going to invite? As long as you're in tune with what you're going to get, you know, I think I don't think it really has a, a strong uh, impact one way or the other. As long as you're tuned into what you're going to get if they sub on when you sub. Barry, you haven't had to come back and try and go, you know, catch up. Yeah. What did you see from your team? Getting a or your unit getting a chance to to tie the game way like what did you learn about them in that situation? Well, I thought I thought they showed some grit, you know, all the way down to the fourth down. I mean, that's a that's a unique situation uh, to be you know backed up that far and to have the, the elements fighting against you to some degree, you know. And it got to fourth down and it wasn't going our way. And Tommy threw a strike and Brian made a great catch and all of a sudden we were, you know, we were going and. Uh, you know, unfortunately, we did not we did not execute the last play uh, of the game the way it needed to be ex you know executed, and um, you know, cost us opportunity to get the ball in the end zone and still have a chance. So we got to get better from that. We got to grow from that. We can't let that happen again. You know, we I was pleased with the way we popped it down the field and and we were fighting and scratching and clawing, um, but we got to finish that with the ball in the end zone to give our guys a chance to catch it. What adjustments can you make for better fourth down success on Saturday? Say, I'm sorry, one more time. What adjustments can you make for better fourth down success on Saturday? Well, I, I mean, we, the adjustments primarily need to be through, um, I think, a combination of, you know, uh, putting, putting, putting our guys in a better situation, and then we have to be able to execute the details of those calls and those, those critical moments, which we've shown we've had a propensity, propensity to do so. At this, you know, at the, to this uh, part of the season, I mean, obviously reflected back in Minnesota just a few weeks earlier, we were really good on fourth down, and so I think our guys have confidence in that. We just didn't get it done. We had some longer ones the other day too that kind of uh, added into the, you know, the the uh, one for six, but the the short ones, you know, I mean, obviously like the percentage scale when you're dealing with fourth and one and fourth and two, those are favorable for the offense to to achieve, and we got to get those. When it gets fourth and seven and fourth and eight, your your chances of getting them get lower. We had to do every one of those that we did the other day. I mean, there was just no question that every one of those fourth downs that we went for, I think were pretty almost just, almost, uh, I mean, just slam dunks as far as you, you have to. The, the, the situation called for it. You know, we weren't, we weren't able to be able to kick a field goal into that, that, that strong of a win from the 25 yard line. So, um, so your percentages obviously go, 
you know, go against you, the longer it gets. But we've got to be better in those ones that are manageable for us uh, through both play calling and through execution. Seems like, Arguably, you, seems like you played a lot of... Uh, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Arguably the biggest game, obviously, in the last decade uh, with the implications and everything coming up against Purdue. What, has that been talked about amongst the team, and, and has that message been given across? Yeah, as we turned the page last night, I think everybody's in tune with what, you know, the, what, what's at stake still for us, and what happened on last Saturday does not really impact us moving forward uh, to, to a large degree. I mean, I'm not trying to sweep what happened under the rug by any stretch of imagination, but... I think everybody understands, uh, you know, there's a rivalry involved, there's, there's implications to the conference race involved, and, and uh, you know, and also the old, I mean, you get 12 of them guaranteed, right? And if you can't get up for each of those 12 that something's wrong with you, I'm confident our guys will bounce back and, and put their best foot forward this week to get ready to play a good Purdue team. On that last drive, it looked like K Casey was close to being out of bounds. Yeah. Uh, what are the mechanics of communicating that with the, with the guys on the field? To let well, we're, clear? yeah, we're going... <coughs> Really, to be honest with you, what held us up, it was just it, we had just a um, just a little hiccup in what the protection was, and uh, just if it was one way or the other, and so there was just a small argument there, not an argument, but just a little pause that cost us a few seconds. The guy Casey was really close to the sideline. I, I don't know if there was a small amount of confusion there that when he caught the ball on the sideline and the clock stopped for a first down. I don't know if our guys thought that maybe a pause for a second because it was like really bang bang play right on the sideline, um, but. We should have been in our normal operating mode there, of, uh, assuming we're going, um, and we just took a few too many ticks there. That you know, was, it was end up being a costly deal to lose those five to six seconds there. It could have afforded us one more play. Um, something again that we got to learn from and move on from um, in a hurry.